just like with any other type of fundraising, preparation really is the key to success. So when you're thinking about writing your grant application, the first thing I'd recommend is that you really know your project. So what is it exactly that you need money for? What are the specifics? What is every part of this project and all of the detail that you know at this stage? Who does your project benefit? Again, looking back at your stakeholder list, who are all of the people who have a potential interest in this project? And, uh, you know, how widely is it going to be shared? Also, be really clear about how much money you need. Again, you've worked out your budgets. You need to be really clear and really realistic with that so that you really, again, like know your project inside out. You know exactly what that money will get spent on and exactly where it will come from. The next thing that you want to spend time doing is researching different funders. So as I mentioned, there's loads out there and they all have different application processes. They all have different aims and objectives and you need to get to know what those things are. So look around, do your research, work out what organisations are offering funding. Who funds the type of project that you are developing? So look for those logos on different projects that you encounter, things that are in your field of practice, things that are uh, maybe in your local area. Who are the people who are funding those different types of projects? Work out how you make an application. So usually you'll find lots of information online from any of these funding bodies about exactly how to make an application. It'll give you deadlines, it'll give you word limits, it'll tell you if you have to apply online or by post or by email or any of those different kind of ways. And then I want you to most importantly make a list of these potential funders. So working out against these criteria, who are the potential funders that you need to look at and research more carefully. That leads us on to the next part of this process, and that's about knowing your funder. So again, you need to check that you and your project are eligible to apply. This is the very first kind of hurdle, the very first thing. There'll be a set of criteria that the funder has published, usually again online, to tell you who exactly is eligible and what exact type of projects are eligible to apply. So you're looking out for what area they cover, so what geographical place that funder covers, what types of project they fund and do not fund. Again, lots of funders are really specific about this. There might be a particular activity that they will or won't fund and you need to know that. You also need to know how much money the funder is offering. So what are the minimum and maximum amounts of money that they allow you to apply for? So, for example, if you need about £2,000 for your film project, applying to a fund where the minimum of £5,000 is there won't do you any good. It won't help you out. Similarly, if you needed £2,000 and the maximum for the funder is 500 again, you won't be able to apply. You won't be able to realise your project with that budget. Also on this list, you really need to know what the deadline is. So some funding programmes are rolling, they go all year, you can apply at any time. Some are at very specific times. Some might only exist for six months or a year and then be gone. So you really need to know what the deadline is for each of those funders that you're having a look at. You'll remember as well that you need to really pay attention to the funder's aims. So you really need to know about what it is that they want to do as an organisation. Then you're bringing across your projects and your project's aims. And the part here that we're really interested in is this the part at the middle of this Venn diagram. So this is the crossover between the aims of the funder and your project's aims. This crossover section, this is your project proposal. So this is the part that you're going to write about. This is the part that you're going to really make sense of in your funding application. Some more research for you is around reading the guidelines. So again, lots of funders will produce guidelines that produce whole documents about how to uh, make an application to their process. 
read these really carefully and make sure you follow the advice. You might also want to make contact with that funding body or that organisation just to simply recheck your eligibility. So you've looked online, you've had a good look through the documents and you want to check any details with them. It also shows that you're really careful about what you're doing and that you're making contact with them personally and that can be really important to some funders. Once you've got that advice, once you know those guidelines and you know that eligibility, follow it. That's really, really important. Those funders have, have published those guidelines for a reason and that's because they keep getting applications that don't follow them. So don't let that happen to yours. Don't let it be disregarded. Make sure you take all of that advice and follow that advice. Give them everything they ask for in that application process. My top tip for you as well is to find somebody who has already done this successfully. So who has already got funding and got money from that particular funder and ask them about that process. Ask them if they might mentor you or support you during your making of the application or if they can read over it and be a kind of critical eye or an advisor on the project. They'll feel really flattered about this They'll see that you recognise their hard work and their skill sets and they might well be able to help you. They might well be able to give you that time and support uh, to make your proposal the best it can be. And alongside all of this, remember to look online for different hints and tips. So there's lots of people out there who are sharing information about the best ways to write up project proposals, about specifics to do with different uh, funding bodies and ways that they like to see their proposals. And I would recommend reading as much of that as you can. Really looking out for it, asking for recommendations from other people and finding out being as well armed as you can be going into this process. In a similar way, find out as much as you can about the application form or the process at this stage. So copy all of the headings or the questions from that application form into a separate document. And use your project aims, your stakeholders list, your activity plan and your budget to answer the questions that they're asking. Remember, you can stick to the word limits. You really have to in a lot of the forms. But first of all, write it all out and edit it back down so that you've got all of that information in there. And then you can edit through to see which is the most important for that application. Then ask somebody else to read it. Please, 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 please don't send it off before you've proofread it, before you've had at least one or two people look at it for you. Because without that kind of external eye, there might be a really obvious problem or a mistake that you've made on the form and you won't know until it's too late. Because of this all or nothing kind of process that happens with grant funding, you really need to make sure that none of that slips through, that none of that happens. So get somebody else to read your application before you submit it and double check those supporting documents. Make sure that you've got everything that they've asked for. If you need to attach a CV, make sure you attach a CV. If it needs to be photographed in a specific format, make sure that you do that. So you wouldn't want your application and your hard work to be discarded simply because it didn't have the right supporting documents. Once you've got your application in, then there's this waiting game. So you're going to uh, sit back, sit at home and wait until whatever the deadline is that you'll hear back on, whether that's two weeks or six weeks or 12 weeks, however far down the track. And unfortunately, there's a high likelihood that your project might be unsuccessful. So what do you do in that case? What happens if you are unsuccessful? I'd say the first thing to remember is don't take it personally. I know that it feels like because you've put your heart and soul into this, because you've spent so much time and energy writing this application, it can feel like a really personal rejection, but it isn't. Usually funders have far more applications than they can ever fund and usually there are specific reasons why you wouldn't have got the money on that occasion. 
Remember also that practice makes perfect. So the more of these grants and the more of these funding bids that you start to write, the more successful you'll find yourself being. That's because you'll have got used to the language, you'll got used, have got used to the expectations of different funders and what they need to see in that proposal. And you'll get really good at making that clear and making that really approachable so that they can see how your project works and why they should fund it, why they should be the people to take it on. It's also really important to ask for feedback. So um, some funders will give you initial feedback, some will give Give you more detailed feedback if you contact them. That's really important so that you can improve, so that you can make resubmissions or that you can submit the next time from scratch and that you won't make the same mistakes again. So asking for feedback I would say is a really important part of this learning process. Another thing that you can do is to build your track record as you go. So building up with smaller projects that require less resources will help show your track record and help prove to those funders that they can take a gamble on you. So you're not going to just run away with the money, you know what you're doing, you know how to run a project like this and now you're scaling up in terms of ambition and in terms of what you want to achieve. So I think that's a really good thing that you can be doing all along in your career. My next piece of advice would be to get a mentor. So somebody who has done this process before, somebody maybe who's like four or five, ten years ahead of you, who can give you advice, who's been through the things that you're doing. And you might want to approach that person, you might not necessarily know them beforehand. They'll appreciate a professional approach. You also need to understand that they might not necessarily have time at this particular moment to help you. They might be able to suggest other people who could help you. Or there might be other ways to approach the situation. So again, like if at first you don't succeed, try again. Find that mentor, find somebody who's already done this process so who can help you through any of the pitfalls and any of the setbacks that you have along the way. And my final, final, final rule is try again. So it can feel crushing and really disappointing, but it may have been as simple as when you put the application in, there were just another five applications that pipped you to the post so that we're slightly better for one reason or another or slightly more timely or urgent in some way. That won't always be the case. Sometimes just by resubmitting the application you can be successful again. So don't give up, don't get disheartened and do try again. So I hope this series has given you lots of different hints and tips for how to get started on fundraising for your projects. If you haven't looked at the other videos yet, check out the playlist, see all of the uh, different parts of the process all the way through, and I'd love to hear what you think about these. I'd love to hear in the comments what it is that you'd improve, what it is that you'd change, or what it is that you're gonna use from these videos. So please let me know, and I look forward to seeing your projects in the real world.